Today I want to encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. This was the focus of my sermon yesterday. For those of you who heard that or have had a chance to watch it, uh, this will sound a little bit familiar, but I think it's worth underlining. Our verse is verse 11 from chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, there's a couple assumptions here that um, I just want to make sure we're hearing from a biblical perspective. Uh, first of all, that there is armor that God makes available to us. And we heard in Ephesians 6, as I shared on Sunday, those seven different pieces of armor that we have, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, putting on our feet, whatever enables us to proclaim the gospel of peace. There is the shield of faith that we hold in front of us to protect us. Um, there is the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, uh, which is the Word of God. So there are these seven pieces of armor uh, that God makes available to us, but we are the ones who have to choose whether we're going to put it on or not. And as I said in my sermon, uh, no Roman soldier going into battle would have said, you know, I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to bring a couple pieces of armor against the barbarians today. You know, I'm not that worried about the Visigoths, so maybe I'll just bring my sword and shield and I won't bother wearing a breastplate or a helmet. No soldier would ever do that. And yet I wonder how often do we as Christians in the 21st century do we unconsciously walk out into the spiritual battlefield that is the world and we go out unarmed? That we aren't consciously taking on truth and righteousness and peace and faith. And I think it's really interesting in particular that Ephesians mentions the flaming arrows of the evil one. Because, as I, again, shared in my sermon, uh, the way the Romans would attack, they had this tortoise formation where you would see all these men with shields in front and shields on top, and it was impenetrable. And part of why they did that was especially when they were attacking another unit or laying siege to a fort or a wall or a city was so that the flaming arrows couldn't get to any of them. So Ephesians is using that very image to say, put on the whole armor of God so that you may stand. And the final piece is against the wiles of the devil. Now, I know some people in the 21st century might think the idea of a devil or Satan or the adversary, which are all terms we find in the New Testament, uh, is antiquated or old-fashioned. Uh, but as C.S. Lewis wrote in his famous screw tape letters, uh, one of the greatest strategies of the adversary, of the devil, is for people to believe he simply doesn't exist. Um, personally, I think when you look around at the world, um, it's pretty easy to find evidence for evil, for those principalities and powers and spiritual forces that are arrayed and aligned against God. And we don't want to go out into the world without our spiritual armor, and we don't want to go into a battle not realizing that we are in a fight.